to inoculate uh, the, your totems with, again, either the oyster or the lion's mane, uh, you'd first cut your trees down fresh um, and buck up the log into two foot sections. Uh, each of those two foot sections can then be either left in the woods where they fell or you can move them to a more convenient location. Um, once you've decided where you're going to set your logs, then you would cut those logs into two pieces, essentially one cut in the middle, uh, cutting the log in half, and then you cut a little two inch cookie off the top of the log. And so we're just creating places to then insert that spawn into the log. You really just need a chainsaw as your main tool to inoculate these logs, but with that comes some danger. So um, it's really important to have chaps when you're cutting with a chainsaw, um, a good helmet with good head protection and face protection and ear protection. Um, gloves are really recommended and a saw that is not an ancient dinosaur but actually has sort of some of the modern safety features. So we're going to cut up this log uh, with all those things in mind. We're going to cut uh, about halfway through the log and then a little cookie off the top so that we have those three pieces to work with uh, when we inoculate. It's important after you've cut your logs, uh, you want to cut them where you're going to set them up because if you were to take these and move them, and let's say you cut 10 other logs, you might get really confused about the order that they're stacked in. So I try to cut them exactly where I'm going to set this log up. Um, <clears throat> this five pound bag of spawn uh, will do about 10 of these logs, give or take. So uh, that's uh, about $15, $20 a bag. So it's pretty inexpensive, a couple dollars per, per totem to set this up. Um, <clears throat> other things we'll need is just two, two bags, uh, generally a just regular old shopping paper bag or just a piece of cardboard. And then one of those larger leaf bags you can get at the hardware store. And so the basic inoculation is we'll first set uh, the smaller bag on the ground because our first bit of inoculation is going to be right here and we want to avoid contamination from the soil so this helps kind of protect that. I generally take about a, a good handful of the spawn and just break it up so it's nice and small. About the size of this first log and we'll just set that right on top. Make sure it's nice and level. Another handful and this time we'll make sure it's nice and small and it should cover the whole surface of the log maybe about a quarter of an inch. it down a little bit and then we'll put the second piece on top and then one more handful on the second piece and finally that little cookie piece right on top there and so there's no reason why you couldn't actually, if you wanted to make this log longer and cut more pieces, um, the important thing is that about every foot, you're cutting it in half and putting that spawn right in between the two pieces. 
and then on top this cookie just helps from the top part to uh, keep it from drying out. So this example is a poplar log with golden oyster mushroom. Again, you could also be using lion's mane um, on uh, sugar maple or beech as well. So after we're done with the stacking, the final step is to put the leaf bag over. And the leaf bag is, is nice because it allows you to cover it and then sort of roll it down at the base. You might even put a few rocks around the base to hold it in place. And the purpose of this bag is to keep rodents out uh, as the mushrooms are colonizing and also to keep it a little bit more humid and a little bit darker uh, during that spawn run phase. So again, about the first year or so is when the mushrooms are colonizing the log and then they'll be ready to fruit. So uh, we like to set these logs up in the woods uh, because of course these mushrooms are found growing on, on log substrates all the time. And so we're trying to emulate that environment uh, through the, the type of temperature, humidity, and especially shade that the forest provides. And so uh, keeping your logs in the, in the shade helps uh, with good mycelium development and it helps with good fruiting and it keeps the right conditions. And especially in dry and sunny and hot years, uh, we can have problems with mushroom production. But in the woods, generally, we see the temperature and humidity is moderated and so it's, it's great for, for keeping consistency. The ideal forest would be conifers because you have year-round shade. Uh, this woods here that we have uh, on our farm is, uh, is all sugar maple, so uh, the leaves will drop pretty soon and we'll have full sun for a good chunk of the year. And so we end up actually covering all of our logs with shade cloth, um, so, cause just because we don't have any hemlock or pine or anything to grow them under. So if you have it, then I would say conifers are best, and if not, then any other shade forest will do. With the more shade, essentially, the better.